now, the general weather around Alaska. Greetings and welcome everyone to Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan coming to you from the National Weather Service in Alaska region on this Tuesday, July 29th, 2025. And taking a look at the weather related headlines across the state of Alaska, we have rain showers that have been over the Panhandle and interior today. Um, we're gonna start to see some rain showers developing over areas of South Central, especially uh, tonight into Wednesday as a result of some of that moisture coming along the Gulf Coast linking up with uh, winds aloft that are west-northwest and that provides the convergence along and south of the Alaska range that will allow uh, those rain showers to develop and expand across parts of south central late tonight and on Wednesday. But in the wake of that, high pressure is going to rebuild later this week into the early weekend over the central and northern interior, allowing more in the way of some sunshine, temperatures warming back up above 70 in some areas, and that will tend to increase the fire danger. Meanwhile, in the southeast, the Juneau Forecast Office continues to carefully monitor the Mendenhall Glacier uh, Lake situation. It continues to feel, fill about three to four feet a day. We're not anticipating any real heavy rains or any uh, heavy run, uh, melt runoff, but the, the thing is, this is a gradual process. And because we had two back-to-back -back major floods in 2023 and 2024, uh, they're very concerned about just making sure when that time draws near that we can uh, give you as much uh, advance uh, notice as possible, especially for the people in the vicinity uh, of Juneau that experienced that flooding uh, the last couple of years. Above normal temperatures are expected into the first week of August across most of the mainland with uh, some wetter conditions in the southeast, especially from around the southeast uh, interior around uh, McCarthy, Wrangell, St. Elias Mountains into the southeast panhandle, especially southern parts of the panhandle. So on this Tuesday afternoon, a couple FAA webcams, salt you up there in the uh, Tanana Valley, rain showers 59 degrees, and a number of uh, areas of rain and rain showers there across the central uh, interior along and north of the Alaska range. Meanwhile, in uh, the central, uh, areas of the Panhandle cake, some light rain, overcast skies, 63 degrees. Yesterday, Haines reached a high temperature of 83 degrees, had a heat advisory in effect with all that sunshine, but temperatures today are a good 10, 13 degrees cooler than that due to the cloud cover. And on the uh, hazardous weather map, we have no watches, warnings, or advisories currently in effect, at least as of mid-afternoon this uh, Tuesday. So fires uh, across the state, we still have uh, over 180 active fires. That number was up above 240 about a week and a half, two weeks ago. So that's come down due to some rain that's helped uh, dampen those fires. But then the stat that's come up is the uh, amount of acreage estimated to have burned so far this 2025 fire season in Alaska. It's up now to just above 980,000 acres. So we're only 20,000 acres away from reaching a million acres burned. And on the fire danger map coming up for Wednesday, a little pocket of higher fire danger in the southeast toward McCarthy and then up maybe toward areas of the Copper River, Northern Copper River Basin and over toward Northway. But the rest of the mainland pretty um, low because of, again, some cooler temperatures, some episodes of rain and just conditions that aren't uh, favorable for uh, the spread of fire as we might find under drier and hotter conditions. Satellite imagery, not much has changed from the other day. We still have that low in the North Pacific with this broad circulation and you can kind of see this little arc. Uh, that's a trough that's rotating back now along uh, the coastline of the Panhandle and that's going to fling some moisture all the way back here toward uh, Prince William Sound, the Eastern Kenai. Meanwhile, you can kind of see a dip here in the clouds, curls like this, that indicates mid and upper level winds. When these two systems kind of bump into each other, that's gonna create some convergence later tonight and on Wednesday over along and south of the Alaska range, including areas around Cook Inlet, Talkeetna Mountains. So you're gonna see showers become more numerous later this Tuesday night into Wednesday. So it'll be a cloudier, cooler, and potentially wetter day in some areas on Wednesday. And then further west, we still have this ridge of high pressure holding on out across St. Paul down toward the Alaska Peninsula, but a, a low pressure and warm front is going to pull across uh, the Aleutians, especially uh, Wednesday night into Thursday, and that low will emerge out in the central bearing here by the time we get into Thursday night and Friday. So on the weather map, we have that low sitting down there in the North Pacific late tonight, early on Wednesday morning, some light showers along the Gulf Coast, still again, 
Some light showers scattered about areas of the interior behind me. Here comes this first little wave of low pressure coming northeastward. As we get into Wednesday, it starts crossing the central Aleutians. Uh, meanwhile, the ridge of high pressure here along the southwest coast, Nunavik Island, the ridge kind of builds back to the northeast along the north slope, and that'll become more pronounced on Thursday. We still have the low down here in the North Pacific doing its thing, kind of a very weak, subtle trough. Uh, Wednesday sitting here along the Kenai, just off of Kodiak Island. So again, you have a favorable convergence zone here for some showers to take place. And by the time we get into Thursday, that low maybe have crept a little further north. Still some showers there along out over the Gulf. Uh, showers diminishing though here in the central and especially northern interior along. And north of the uh, Yukon River, it's gonna become drier as that axis of the high pressure rebuilds. And then first uh, low comes up into the central bearing. We have another little push of warm air that's gonna kind of slide more along and south of the central and eastern Aleutians by the time we get into Friday. But we'll have a low down around 989 millibars. So a little breeziness with this thing and some rain showers and with that warmer air coming north and eastward, likely create some uh, lower ceilings and areas of uh, fog, low stratus. And then out here toward uh, the Gulf, we have the low still sitting and spinning here. A weak high pressure just tries to develop uh, outside of Prince William Sound. Weak thermal trough sets up in through the central interior, but notice uh, you get north of there, uh, more in the way of sunshine. And with that high pressure uh, building from the northern half of the mainland up along the Canadian Arctic coast, uh, that's going to provide the drier and warmer conditions in the central and northern interior here to close out the week and start the weekend. So temperature-wise, uh, Wednesday morning, uh, readings could dip into the 30s, mid-upper 30s along the Arctic coast, Ut Utkiavik, but otherwise, Brooks Range down into St. Lawrence, generally 40s. You get down here, warm, mild conditions, 55, even near 60, a few spots in south central with the cloud cover and relatively moist, uh, mild flow coming in from the east and then across the panhandle lows generally uh, upper 50s. And as we get into Wednesday, a few spots in the panhandle, if you can get a muster some sunshine there, maybe around Ketchikan, Metlakatla, get, getting back up around or just above 70. Could squeak out 70 still at uh, Yukon Flats there at uh, Fort Yukon, Eagle or Northway. And then as we look out here, this area too, with a little sunshine, it could be 70 plus inland from Bristol Bay on Wednesday afternoon. And for Thursday morning, uh, we find readings uh, again along uh, the Beaufort Sea coast, just dipping into the upper 30s, uh, generally 50, above 50 uh, as we get down here through south central, south of the Alaska range, otherwise 40s to near 50 along the Yukon, uh, in a stretch of the Yukon Valley. And temperatures back through the panhandle, mid to upper 50s with lower 50s extending down along the Alaska Peninsula into Dutch Harbor. And for Thursday, notice now that we're starting to see that high reorient like this and the sunshine coming back out, we should see temperatures warming along the west side into this in central and, and northern interior. That'll be more pronounced come Friday, but at least it's a start. It could be 71 or so there at Bethel, especially if you can get some sun near 70, places like uh, McGrath extending up toward Huslia and on over toward Tanana should be able to get back up around 70 or so. So the extended forecast for uh, August 4th through the 8th, uh, first uh, full section there of August, we're looking for above normal temperatures, pretty likely across much of the mainland, centered on the Yukon River, and then maybe near normal temperatures across uh, much of the Panhandle. And for precipitation, best chance of above normal precipitation will be across the southern two thirds of the Panhandle, because we're gonna have weather systems that bring in moisture southwest to northeast coming in off the Gulf. So this would be the most likely area and it trails off more scattered showers in through the eastern interior. And then to the west, maybe slightly below normal precipitation expected along the west coast, Bering Strait, including Kotzebue and Norton Sounds. And coming up, Grant Smith from the National Weather Service Forecast Office in Juneau will have further explanations about this Mendenhall Glacial Lake potential for an outburst flood and he will uh, give you a, a nice explanation of what it is and what they are expecting and watching for. A GLOF, or a glacial lake outburst flood, happens because glaciers are retreating. Where there was a basin, or a geographic bowl essentially, that was full of ice, 
well, is now allowed to be filled with water instead. And the leftover glacier acts like a dam that keeps the water in place. But there will come a point as the glacier retreats that the water is allowed to escape. Now, are gloffs unique to Juno? No. These actually happen all over the world, but it's uncommon for these gloffs to impact communities, which is why the situation here with the Mendenhall here in Juneau is so unique. Now, there are several ways that water can escape from the basin. One way it can go is over the top, which is called overtopping, or it can penetrate through the great glacier, and in a sense, it can actually go under the glacier. Now, regarding overtopping, you can think of it like a bathtub, where as the water fills up, eventually it hits the top and starts to overflow. It's very similar with a gloff. And actually, overtopping is something that we look for because it usually foreshadows the beginning of a release. Regarding subglacial release, well, draining begins when a weak spot forms in the ice dam and the water starts to flow through it, creating a channel in the ice. Now, as the water flows through this channel, the water eats away at the ice, making the channel bigger and bigger, and the water drains out faster and faster. Now, there will come a point when the water pressure in the basin decreases so much that the weight of the glacier overcomes the pressure from the basin, and the ice dams the water back up, and so the water stops flowing out. Now, predicting when the water will stop flowing out is what makes GLOF forecasting so difficult, because we can't really predict when the glacier will stop the water from flowing out again. Coming up in the next video, we'll talk more about the two types of dam releases.